Are you ready for another top 10 video? Of course you are. And you're in for a treat because today's video is all about Daniel Smith and what I consider to be their top 10 signature colors. So last time we went over my top 10 Windsor and Newton colors, and I wanted to go the complete opposite direction for my next top 10. And in my opinion, nothing could be more polar opposite of Windsor and Newton than the brand Daniel Smith. If Windsor and Newton is your timeless little black dress, Daniel Smith is kind of like your eccentric friend who walked into the bar at happy hour wearing a pair of patent leather pink pumps and like a leopard print scarf. She is unapologetically confident, a little peculiar, but always, always fabulous. For those of you who don't know, Daniel Smith is an American brand of watercolor paints that are renowned for their exceptional quality and their very vibrant colors. They've been around for over 30 years and have one of the most extensive and most unique range of colors that exists on the market. And when I say extensive, I am not kidding around because with a whopping, I think it's 250 colors, it can be tough for even a seasoned veteran to navigate all the colors and options that they offer. To me, one of the things that sets Daniel Smith apart from the competition is their focus on natural pigments, as well as their very unique convenience, multi-pigment colors. And convenience means colors that are ones that could be mixed manually from other single pigment colors, but are available pre-mixed for, you guessed it, convenience. But these are not basic mixtures. What I love about them is that their multi-pigment mixes are unexpectedly unique and um, they're very clean, which is something I could go deeper into, but that's a loaded subject for another video altogether. So the colors that I picked out in this video are going to be the most unique ones that can add an element of unexpected magic to your watercolors in the uniquely Daniel Smith way. It's kind of like going on a sightseeing bus and seeing the, the must-see attractions. So with that said, put your seatbelts on, grab your cameras. We are entering Daniel Smith land with number 10 on our countdown. Number 10 is Nickel Azo Yellow. Azo? Azo? Tomato? Tomato? I don't know. While this pigment is available from other brands, I find that Daniel Smith's version is really beautiful and has a vibrancy to it that is nearly like, like a neon color. Of all the yellows that exist in the world, I think that Nickel Azo Yellow is one of the most useful ones to have. Used on its own, it can give you sun-kissed golden moments and echo the brilliance of um, like a gold patina without having to reach for any metallics or any um, iridescent colors at all. Also, if you're looking for a yellow to be able to mix many, many leafy greens from like a tropical orchid green to like a moss green and olive and beyond, this one is going to be your new BFF and the most valuable valuable team player on your palette. And my favorite part is that being more of like a natural palette kind of gal, I love that even with its vibrant and bold and nearly neon hue, there's still a touch of something like natural and earthy about it, which I find to be the perfect balance. Number nine, Lunar Blue. Fly me to the moon. Frank Sinatra, eat your heart out. This Lunar Blue has got everything. <laughs> This is a complex blue with a slight hint of green that creates a really unique and a dreamy look. And moody and understated would be words that I use to describe this color. And again, here we have like a workhorse color that is the very definition of the term convenience color. While you could get to a similar kind of color with mixing pigments like black Iron Oxide and Fidelo Blue. I mean, honestly, like save yourself some trouble and just go out and buy yourself one of these and reap the rewards of like getting all this mood and all this um, ambiance in this one color. But on to examples. Use this color to paint soft and dreamy skies, dark storm clouds, or to create the serene and the calm atmosphere of like a foggy morning. And you can also use it for soft and complex natural shadows, or honestly just about anything under the sun. I mean, moon. Number eight. 
Imperial Purple. How do I even begin to describe Imperial Purple? I think the best way to describe it is um, it's the 1960s love child between magenta and ultramarine, both colors of which I absolutely adore. And it has like a slight granulation to it, which makes it flicker between blue, pink, and violet. It's in a color like Imperial Purple that the beauty and the personality of Daniel Smith shines through because the brand is not about being safe and expected. It's all about personality, which Imperial Purple has in spades. But back to a more logical and less emotional reasoning, another thing that I love about Imperial Purple is that um, it's very versatile. So you can go from rich and royal, like in the satin gown of a duchess, but it can also be more quiet and discreet and waters down to like a very delicate, very pale periwinkle. And my favorite part? Because magenta and ultramarine, aka mom and dad, are warm and cool, respectively, what you get is a violet or purple that can essentially speak both languages. Parlez-vous Daniel Smith? Why, yes I do. Number seven, Piemontite Genuine. This color is historical and looks like it belongs like in the Renaissance period. It's a warm and rich brownish red color that has a depth and intensity to it, which I find to be very remarkable. Unlike the other colors that I just mentioned, this one comes from Daniel Smith's Primatech line of colors. Now I will say that there's been a little bit of controversy surrounding the Primatech collection and some concerns that relate to the sourcing of the pigments and the labeling and light fastness of the pigments. Um, so as with anything, do your research, do your own light fast tests to figure out if this paint is right for you. I'm sorry to sound like a commercial for prescription painkillers or something. But as for me, I love their entire Primatech lineup for their unusual granulating and textural properties. And Piemontite Genuine is definitely one of them. The pigment that makes up this very unique color comes from a ground up mineral that's harvested from the hills of Italy. And it definitely, you know, evokes that feeling when, when you're painting with it. When you think of the color brown, it sounds so basic and not special, but this one is very unique. It granulates in a really intriguing way, which means you could use it to mimic the crackly texture on the pages of an old scroll or manuscript, or maybe on the textured stones on a, on a monastery, or, or maybe the crackly you know, bark texture on an oak tree. So the uses of this are just um, very, very broad, which I think is amazing. So this is definitely one that I would try if you're interested in exploring granulation and surface textures. Number six, undersea green. Undersea green is a color that I would never have picked up on my own had it not been for the Jean Haynes collection that I bought a couple of years ago. And I actually have a whole video devoted to exploring and swatching that whole set. And it was actually my gateway to entering the whole world of Daniel Smith. Coming back to Undersea Green, I'm so glad it was bundled into that set because it's quickly become one of my essential go-tos for landscape painting. And I believe that it's made up of quinacridone gold and um, some extra granular ultramarine too. And the result is this very muddy, like sediment-y, deep moss color that I just love to use on like everything, literally everything. I like, I season my pot roast with it. I clean the kitchen sink with it. I change the baby's diaper with this color. I love this color. The color is literally built for landscapes and for botanicals, but let me take it a step further and say that you can get very creative with it and definitely find ways of using this color on people, on animals. And I even love using it for shadows in the backstage scenes of my ballerinas where you get this very velvety, moody green that you can use to cool down the temperature of stage lights. Number five is Buff Titanium. Okay, this one falls in the unexpected category for me until recently. I had heard many artists swoon over this color and for the longest time, I just didn't get it. I was always really perplexed because, I don't know, Buff Titanium always seemed like like a throwaway color. I always felt that Buff Titanium was a color that was just too 
opaque and gouache like and honestly that you could you could easily mix a color like this with lots of other colors but with that mindset i was like honestly i was totally missing the point it's only after pushing myself to use it because i had a tube lying around like wasting away in the studio that i finally discovered the true merit of this color buff titanium comes alive and really shows its worth as a team player and when you're mixing it with other colors out the tube it has a soft sandy color that's reminiscent of like an eggshell or sunlight peeking through on a cloudy day however like i mentioned before it's in the mixes that the magic really happens so if you mix it with like a rose or an orange you get the most delicate soft colors for the petals of a tulip or an orchid or if you add just a very small touch of indigo to it you can get the most gorgeous french blue for like a seaside landscape you can also add a bit of it to clouds in the sky to get like an ethereal sort of heavenly um, effect of like light coming through the clouds I'm telling you you've got to try it number four is French ultramarine speaking of unexpected if you've been watching my channel for over the past year this one will really surprise you because I received French ultramarine as part of a set a while back I don't remember the, the name of the set and when I when I was swatching it it like I, I hated it <laughs> I, I hated it and I completely poo-pooed it. Boy, was I wrong. I jumped to conclusions about it without giving it a chance, which you know, admittedly is like a, a little bit of a bad habit of mine, which I need to work on. One of the reasons why I had shunned it before was I was comparing it to Sennelier's French Ultramarine, which had always been like my, my absolute favorite. And the two could not be more polar opposite. Sennelier's instance of this color is very buttery and smooth and punchy, whereas Daniel Smith's is um, very granulated. It's a tad more earthy and is a bit more reminiscent of like a historical ultramarine um, or historical ultramarines that were made from the famed gemstone lapis lazuli. They're both fantastic, of course, but Daniel Smith's took a little more um, understanding and an acquired taste to understand how to work with it. But now let me tell you, I am completely sold and I am hooked. I used it recently for a blue sky, a ballet costume and cool shadows on architecture on the very same painting and beyond even those applications it makes a terrific color to mix with and honestly this could be the only blue on your palette because the unique blends that you can get from it make it an incredibly versatile color and uh, unlocks a whole world of possibilities so you can get like endless endless options out of it number three is quinacridone rose now believe it or not i am not a pink person and you must be wondering how on earth that's possible given that i have spent pretty much the last decade painting ballerinas and dancing ballet but yes you heard right i am not generally a pink person and would much rather mix my own if i do i always go for duller more antique looking pinks like let's say a potter's pink or dusty roses but hey, never say never, right? And I'm glad I'm making the exception for Daniel Smith's Quinacridone Rose because it's one of my favorite pinks ever. It's a vibrant pink that's perfect for all sorts of floral varieties. And while it's beautiful, you know, at full strength, my favorite thing about it is how delicate and lovely it looks when you water it down and shear it out to the, the palest of petal pinks. And that rosy color is also perfect for the petals of spring flowers like a dahlia or a garden rose. And if you mix that with the buff titanium, which I mentioned earlier in the video, you're in for quite a wonderful surprise. But even if you're not into florals, this is still a very useful color to have in your toolbox because this is skin tone city. Regardless of what undertone or how deep you want the final skin color to be, this is a great foundational color to build a lot of different skin tones from. And you could also use it to make gorgeous blends for still life. Add it to an orange to get some phenomenal peachy tones for like a still life, or for oranges, or fruit baskets, and the the best part is that unlike many pinks and cool reds, and I'm looking at you, Opera Pink, this one is light fast, so you don't have to worry about your painting disappearing and fading on you because this one is going to stand up more to UV light than most other pinks. 
We are down to our top two. And number two on our list is Green Appetite Genuine. Yep, you guessed it. This one is another Primatech color. And what a color it is. How do you even describe this one? It's, um, it's like a younger and hipper sap green. Do you like how I talk about these colors like they're like people or something? Because for me, at least, they, they are. They have personalities of their own and they're, they have style of their own too. So Green Appetite Genuine is made using another ground up gemstone. It's reminiscent of um, like a sap green, but with more olive notes to it and earthy granulation on it, which makes it a perfect color to have and to use for leaves and stems on botanicals, but also for trees, for mountains and bushes on landscapes. Like no joke, the paintings just paint themselves with this. And I love that it lets you create a whole range of greens from um, fresh yellow greens to deep olives with just a single tube. And that modeled granulation makes textures literally the easiest thing in the world to work into your painting. Oh, and I forgot, mixing it is just a dream. Not to mention so much fun because as Forrest Gump says, you never know what you're gonna get. And here we are with my number one recommended color from Daniel Smith. And this one I think is a must have for every palette. And that is Aussie Red Gold. Now this one is somewhat similar to the ever popular Quinacridone Gold in a sense that it has a golden warm yellow color, but that's where the similarities end. While Quin Gold is made from Quinacridone pigments that give it a bright, poppy yellow gold color. Aussie red gold is unique because it does not have synthetic pigments. It contains iron oxide pigments, which gives it a warmer reddish brown and an earthier color to it. In terms of painting properties, Aussie red gold has a more transparent quality. And like I mentioned, an earthier tone, making it really, really great for landscapes and portraits. To me, it's reminiscent of golden ochre cliffs lit by the sunset. And it's excellent for landscape paintings because the natural reddish gold will add a spectacular warm light to leaves, flowers, and landscapes. And it also mixes a range of lovely, very realistic greens when used with blue pigments pigments that I think any botanical painter would absolutely love. And as for me, any time that I want to play with light, whether it's sunrise, sunset, candlelit, or just the warm glow of stage light, this is the first color that I reach for. And that's it. Those are my top 10 Daniel Smith watercolor colors. And like I mentioned, these colors I think are essentials. And whether you are a beginner, whether you're advanced, whether you do this for a living, or you're a hobbyist, I think that these colors will definitely supercharge and add like an extra boost to your color mixing process. And let me know in the comments below if you have tried Daniel Smith, and if you have, what are your favorite colors, um, or what colors you're looking to add to your arsenal very soon, because I would love to know. As always, thank you so much for watching and for joining me for these art videos, and I will see you next time.